In this video we are going to talk about vectors. Uh, vectors are very important for R because most of the, the operations happen through vectors. And we see that it's a very useful tr uh, tool. So um, let's get started. First, uh, let's get back the table that we have been using with weather data. Um, let's see how what is the content of it. So when I have a data frame like that and I use the dollar symbol to select one of the columns of it, uh, it actually returns a vector. You can see. So if I ask for the class of this return it vector, it's a numeric vector, right? So uh, let's let's assign this vector to a variable so we can work with it. Let's assign to v. Okay. So we can. There is many operations for vectors. For instance, length to tell the length of a vector. There is the max, which is the maximum value of the vector minimum value and there is mean value uh, absolute of this um, of this vector let me show the function here absolute of this vector there is also unique values of this vector unique vac uh, values are very useful for classifying uh, frequent re repetitions of a value in a vector uh, there is the sort function. Uh, the sort function it returns the same vector order, and we have also the order uh, function, which is has a different purpose. Order returns the order of the elements. This is actually the 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 position of the element now ordered. So it is not very useful to use just purely order but when you can use the order to order uh, your data frame for instance let's say here we have the table and we are selecting the elements in the order of the vector so now we're going to get the table ordered by this uh, by this vector which was the minimum temperature so here we are getting the um, the table and this so this is the m day with the maximum minimum temperature which was in August and of course the first element here would be the minimum temperature day which was 4th of January so another very this is a very very useful comment very important is which which tells me uh, which elements of this vector satisfy a given uh, condition. For instance, I want to know which elements of V that are smaller than zero, sub-zero temperature, right? So these are the elements of this. This is the position of the elements which has which have the temperature less than zero. Of course we can use the same trick as before and ask like which have the, the V are less than zero and then we have the days the freezing days of the year in this case. Uh, another thing that's very important, important is that you can have uh, vectors of booleans. For instance if you ask just instead of using which you ask just uh, v smaller than zero you're going to get a vector of booleans when true means that this condition is true and false means that it's false so you can use that to create a new uh, a new column in your table for instance let's create a new column called sub zero telling if the temperature was sub zero or not so now it head of our table and we see that now we have a new column saying if it's sub zero or not and uh, vectors of 
We are going to see in the next class how uh, vectors of booleans are very important for selecting elements with more complex, asking more complex questions than just that one. Mm, there is many, there are many other elements, uh, other functions that deal with vectors. I'm not going to cover all them here, just the basic ones. Um, so you can always uh, check your reference card for uh, different commands when you need something different about uh, vectors. Uh, one important thing that I would like to talk is that R is very fast in regarding to vector uh, operations. Uh, I will not cite here publications about the speed because some of them I find that are kind of biased or not very trustable. But, uh, but the fact is that R can achieve speeds equivalent to the fastest languages uh, like C, Python, or Fortran on if, only if programmed correctly. Because it's important to remember that uh, R is a vectorial language. Vectorial in the sense of like it, it's optimized to process vectors and not structures like a structured language. It's a functional language actually. But so I, I would need days to elaborate exactly what it this means and what is exactly a corrective programming in R. But that includes avoiding loops and frequent selections in data frames with some of them. Uh, so if your code is running slow, you should refer to the to the lecture in which I talked about time and then you are able to measure the time of if each, each operation of your code and better understand exactly which of those operations are taking so long and by that process you can then search on the internet how to speed up these uh, operations uh, because usually there is a way to make them way way faster and well, I R is so fast because actually its core runs on C on Fortran. I already mentioned that in a uh, previous lecture. So, um, if you program correctly, you avoid the overhead to get to this uh, C and Fortran routines, and it then runs as fast as any Fortran or C code. Uh, just an example in the description of the video uh, below there on the YouTube. Uh, description of the video, you can find a post that I that I read about in Stack Overflow, Stack Overflow about the speed of looping operations in R, and you can see how absolutely brutal is the difference between a badly implemented code and a good implemented code. It's uh, many orders of magnitude better. In fact, a code that could take years to be run can be run in minutes after optimizations. So it's very important to take a look when your code is uh, running slow and how to better implement these this codes. And so as an exercise, I would like you to, um, to tell how many days with temperature over 35 Celsius degrees in this data set we have. Uh, in the next class, we are going to talk a little bit about conditions and uh, only in the next class that I will solve this exercise to group everything together. Thank you. See you there.